this is a really wonderful conversation we're about to have. I'm going to be talking with Dr. Linda Backman, who is a psychotherapist who stumbled upon the most uh, fascinating int- information along the way. And that has to do with her clients saying as they went back in regressions, they were going past this lifetime and past their experience on earth to other places, other dimensions, other planets. They became known to her as interplanetary beings. And right now, about half her clientele are experiencing this. This is a very big deal. We're going to talk about this and the implications uh, with Linda starting right now. Linda, it's so good to have you with me. Oh, Regina, it's a pleasure to be here. (laughs) <laughs> so, okay. So you're a psychotherapist. And first of all, we've done our, our book club on your book, Souls on Earth. I'm going to also be interviewing you later on at Gaia um, regarding the book Souls on Earth. So, But let's just get a little bit of a backdrop in terms of how your psychotherapy practice became uh, one of regression of souls from other places. Prior to 1993, um, I'm a licensed psychologist. I was a psychologist in private practice doing general practice, as people would imagine um, a psychologist does. Um, I always was fascinated with death, dying, grieving. I did hospice uh, volunteer and board work, but I didn't know why until 1993. In 93, my original psychologist colleague, Um, A man uh, about 14 years younger than I, sadly, from a human standpoint, he died from a type of lung cancer um, in his early 30s. And suddenly he started talking to me from the other side, which back then, Regina, I thought was quite weird and quite strange. Um, I knew a little bit about reincarnation, not a great deal. Um, He began to show me scenes, like scenes in my mind's eye, clairvoyant scenes in the darkness of early morning or late at night. And I I felt like he was showing me scenes of lives we'd shared. Um, And so just to add one more piece that I always think is important. um, So uh, at at that point, I'd been married to the same person I am still married to um, happily and and, and luckily. Um, So my husband and I are very liberal, progressive kind of people. We had never talked about reincarnation, but on that day or those few days when I was having that experience that I explained, I asked my husband to sit down and I said, I'm going to tell you what I what's going on with me. And you can tell me that you think it's completely crazy. I explained that to my husband, Earl, and he looked back at me calmly and I said, you don't think this is strange? And he said, no. And I said, really, why not? And basically what he said was, he said, I guess I blocked out what happened in my childhood. Um, we were both in our middle 40s at the time. He said, I guess I repressed everything that occurred when I was a child about 10, when I remembered, Earl said, when I remembered my past lives in detail, knew they were my lives. So, you know, Earl said, go for it. Um, Go for it was scary because most of my referrals came from medical doctors back then. And I thought, well, I'll I'll never have another client in my practice (laughs) ever again. That didn't happen. But I went forward to study, train, read, learn and move into the direction that now it's almost 30 years ago of the kind of work that I do. And some of your training was with Michael Newton? Yes, um, I trained with Michael. Michael was my mentor. And then I was a colleague of Michael's and we taught this type of work together. So yes, Michael Newton and I were, you know, were first student and you know, teacher and student, and then colleagues, basically. Wonderful. What I mean, what a wonderful colleague to have for both of you. I mean, you're a very uh, astute, practical, pragmatic person, very grounded. And so it's important to have people such as yourself in this capacity. So it starts getting some recognition for what it is. And you've done you are doing that. So now let's talk about how these various uh, people that you were seeing for regression what you felt when they first started popping through saying, I'm not on earth, I'm I'm not from earth, I'm somewhere else right now. And just kind of, we'll just collapse that briefly, what you went through when you started hearing this. Were you aware that people incarnated here from other places? I was like vaguely aware. Um, I know that in training, you know, years before, 
Michael Newton would say, well, sometimes students, you'll you'll have a client um, discovering a past life or an existence somewhere other than Earth. I only vaguely remember him saying that, but probably, Regina, probably about six to eight years into my regression work with clients and gradually, slowly but surely, I began doing almost exclusively regression work and no further conventional psychology. Um, so six to eight years into that that process, I started realizing and, you know, thinking back on my clients the week before and the week prior to that, that 50 to 60 percent of my clients were talking to me about their e- either their past lives. Um, and this is a little tricky to explain, but either their past lives not on Earth or simply where they came from originally that was not on earth. And just to clarify that, so it makes sense to people, the term I use interplanetary soul simply means you're a soul that was created to not incarnate on earth. But obviously I learned about this from humans, human clients. Um, and, And so we have a number of humans on this planet that um, originally did not plan to come to Earth at all. Yes, and you and learned along the way, so we can set the framework. You yourself are an ancient Earth-based soul, right? Is that correct? Y- y- yes. So, and I'm sure we'll get into that historically in terms of Earth. I'm a soul that once came from somewhere else because all the souls that came to Earth and then continue to incarnate on Earth, which is for the most part my incarnations. I have a few non-Earth incarnations, um, but primarily here on Earth. Um, We, we, those of us that came and stayed, we came from somewhere else originally. Yeah. Probably somewhere between 10 and 100,000 years ago. But I have been incarnating here almost exclusively for, say, 50 to 70,000 years. Okay, so good. So you're familiar with the earth people and the earth energy and yes. and now consider yourself for the sake of this conversation an earth-based soul. Correct. Okay. So now what you started seeing is there were people from other planets, uh, other dimensions, other galaxies, there are beings here from all over. And this gets into for me a very interesting discussion. Um I might as well just bring it up now. I've been doing a little series of talks for uh, my patrons having to do with what happened in the 1950s when these um, visitations were occurring from very elegant, very beautiful people from within our solar system, but elsewhere, who were coming to Earth to deliver certain messages about military industrial complex, war, um, taking care of our planet a little better, eating better, being uh, giving us information about one lo- potential longevity of the human species if we could learn how to live more in nature, with nature, and healthfully, even up to levels of the top of governments. We ignored all that. So here we are. So now the beings are incarnating as us so we can get this change going. And so before we get to the subject of how all of this is arranged in hierarchies. I would like to ask you a little bit about um, what you're seeing that's really a little different and complicated for these beings coming for the first or second time from other places. Also about the subject of new beings, the new human and autism. Yes, you know, big, big, big topic and important topic. So, um, One of the reasons, you know, as you well know, Regina, this is such a huge subject that it's hard to even pigeonhole it um, and categorize it. But um, so so interplanetary souls, of course, have been coming to Earth since the inception of of Earth. Um, But at this time, there are more interplanetary souls um, and and I want to say, going through the diaper stage, that's what I like to call it, coming in through, you know, through the womb and the diaper stage. The reason I, I, I say that is because early on on our planet, let's just say two to five thousand years ago, um, it, souls could materialize and dematerialize on Earth, including interplanetary souls could could do just that. Um, 
now that does not occur that it, that uh, energetically that's not feasible so it doesn't doesn't occur um so what i came to understand is that because you know at at the core of me at least in this lifetime um i'm a therapist i, I i've been a therapist my whole basically working life so spirit my guides when i say spirit meaning my spiritual guides which would include my higher self spirit wanted me to start working more and more with we'll just I call them IP souls to make it shorter. Um, I was to begin working with IP souls because it's hard to be here. Well, it's hard to be here, period. But if you are a soul that has not been on earth many times and you come from somewhere else in the universe, then one, you come from a healthy culture. So you come from a place that's not like earth you come from healthy cultures we you know we could spend hours talking about the uniqueness of very you know a variety of healthy cultures but coming to earth both functioning in you know these human bodies is unfamiliar to ip souls and therefore ip souls start having or 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 lifelong issues they have allergies they have autoimmune disorders they have digestive issues um they have all kind of skin problems um you name it and what we call what we as humans call the autistic spectrum which you know i hope everybody knows that the autistic spectrum is from simple and minimal you might say simple and minimal symptoms to far blown you know complicated symptoms um and so some of these some of these people and especially they're often young children that are being labeled as autistic they simply haven't been in human bodies so they don't communicate through language where they come from right. um, they don't eat the diet that humans eat or have to breathe the air or be exposed to toxins in the environment and that sort of thing and so they struggle and 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 they struggle emotionally as well so I was obviously my soul agreed to help these clients be here because we need their wisdom. We need their healthy perspective of life. They're coming in for purpose. Um, and earth is, uh, interestingly, it's sort of a melting pot uh, for souls and, and always has been. So I think we need to get used to the notion that on a soul level, the people driving these vehicles have come from all over since the beginning of the formation of the human body. So I think we can't have kind of proprietary views about what it is to be human. Um, so looking at that, we're seeing that unwise decisions have been made. Um, certainly we're all aware of that. We're seeing how emotions can get out of control, uh, ruin not only families, but entire nations, set them at war with each other for egoic purposes, greed or selfishness. We're all witnessing that this very moment. So now what, okay, first of all, is there a time frame you're seeing as to when the saturation of these souls started incarnating so that we can kind of look down the road in terms of when their effects might be more obvious? I would hazard to say that probably over the last 30 to 50 years, we've had more and more IPs coming to earth and and yet at this very time at this very moment that is speeding up in terms of numbers now you know, you know we're talking regina about numbers numbers of ip souls um on earth incarnate on earth at this time still the numbers are small i mean we're talking about probably somewhere in the neighborhood of two percent of humans Right. It's not all of us. Yeah. These are people being drawn to you because they are having trouble. So this is in your practice. And that's good to clarify. You're seeing these people coming forward because they are trying to get adjusted and seeking help. But 2% is a lot. That's a lot of people. Well, sure. And if you think about the Earth's population, yes, exactly. yes, of course. And, you know, what I find, I mean, as as you're talking, I'm I'm flashing on my memory of so many of these regressions where we see how to, this is always hard to put into words. Um, sometimes I have clients who come and they already know they're not from Earth. 
So I certainly have some clients where that's the presenting issue and we they want to know more about themselves. But I have a lot of clients um, who come and it's so funny, I, I, you know, I hear my guides talking to me in my ears, like, say, you know, add this, add that. So I'll try my best to, you know, speak intelligent, intelligently. And, and, well, and you're talking and listening at the it, same time. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, so the these clients oftentimes i guide the regression now let me just say for people a a spiritual or soul regression is not where i just so people understand a, a spiritual regression a soul regression is where i guide the client to gain their own information they're speaking the information i'm not serving as a channel um to bring the information forward and and so I want to be sure people understand that. So I guide the client in a regression and there are various indications of when a client that I'm working with is probably not a soul that primarily has incarnated on earth, but I don't want, as you might say, I don't want to lead the witness. And so th this is why I have a strong bias that regression therapists need to be well-trained and well-experienced so that you can fit together well okay i guided the client into the discovery of a past life which is often the first step in a regression but oh the client didn't go where they where they travel to was not based on my words of going to a past life this is an example this doesn't always happen where they go oftentimes is the client goes to their home location in the universe and they start describing their home location and i fairly quickly realized they're not telling me about a past <laughs> life anywhere yeah they're telling me where they come from because the client's guides want the client to be more uh accepting of themselves and embracing of why they're so unique so that happens a fair amount Yes. And uh, I, this is not something I would ordinarily talk about, but you and I have talked about it off camera and you're aware of this, that you're an old earth soul. I'm an old IP soul. Been here a really long time working, um, came for purpose. But one of the things that has been very confounding and interesting to me, besides all of those different symptoms, you know, autoimmune allergies and all that, um, <clears throat> is uh, the way of perceiving life here. And this uh and you i know because i read your book that many people and this is something that is interesting for men because many of the viewers watching this are also i think among those who are ip souls so the uh, to have certain abilities open such as to be intuitive even deeply intuitive and at the same time not shrewd too too incredulous or credulous and this is a problem many of your clients had this is a problem i've had my whole life because as my guides told me once upon a time you have to become more shrewd and mm -hmm. it's like the, your being doesn't have that programmed in it it doesn't know how because it's not necessary where you came from now mm -hmm. so a lot of people in this situation can be very easily manipulated hijacked confused because that's not even in the program that anyone would ever do such a thing, right? I mean, that's that's totally right. I mean, there just are a myriad of ways that an IP soul struggles to operate in human culture. Um, I mean, I would hazard to say, Regina, knowing you to even the minor extent that we know each other, that um, you are someone I'm sure that has worked hard to function and um, has learned how to function fairly well in human culture. Um, and, you know, that's not to say, and I know we'll get into this, that's not to say that an earth-based soul, what I call an earth-based soul, doesn't have struggles. They're just different and often not quite as complex. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are, as I'm sure you know, Regina, there are ip souls in body who just don't do well at all either physiologically emotionally spiritually or all of the above right all of the above so it is important because i think for many of the viewers watching this 
they can see some of this or a great deal of this in themselves or in one or two or other family members among friends. And just to just kind of have a little sensitivity that this person is going through more to make this work <laughs> than might meet the eye. I think that is important. Um, I've been here a long time, so I've learned how to socialize, but the private struggles of going through these kinds of things, the uh, watching cruelty, um, even animals eat other animals on the planet is unbearable. Uh, I can't, I could never even watch a nature documentary. None of that makes any sense when you're not from here. Uh, this, you know, predatory nature of earth life on many levels. So that's a good sign right there as people who can't handle predatory have been somewhere where no such thing exists. So um, any other, just because we're going to do that interview a little bit later, the, the rest of this, anything else you want to say before we go into the notion of the various councils that guide uh, humanity? Uh, there are many kind of avenues we could walk down and then spend the whole rest of our time together in in this conversation, um, you know, with the moving down the that that particular avenue. Um, IP souls come from many, many, many different cultures. And the bottom line, you know, yes, classically, there are people that talk about the greys, they talk about the the mantis beings. Um, I believe these are all valid cultures. I, I have come across so many of these uh, people and souls in my work. Um, and so, you know, if we think about, uh, even if we just think about the number of different um, cultures in, in on the planet Earth, um, you know, a Chinese person right. doesn't have the same social standards or social norms that we as Americans do, or even right. even Canadians are different than Americans. So, but but I just want to underscore the um, need for acceptance, um, for patience of IP souls, because for some IPs, it's a great um, uh, struggle. Um, and I think the thing that I was kind of getting this chattering over here from my guides is one of the things my guides wanted me to say. Um, so I'll just try to make this simple, even though it's probably not quite this simplistic. Um, an IP soul, male or female, you know, human person, male or female, incarnate IP soul, if they are in a uh, committed romantic relationship, an IP is probably in a committed romantic relationship with an with what I call an earth-based soul. Because the earth-based soul, and I almost can't talk without my, my hands to demonstrate, it's like the earth-based soul is like the stake in the ground. And the IP soul tends to be, you know, more fluid. And so um usually I'm saying this to people, if you think you're an IP soul, consider the fact that your life partner is probably not IP, or if you think you're an IP soul and you have more than one child, you probably have an earth-based child and likely an IP child. Mm -hmm. And so a whole family, like, uh, you know, just to make it sound conventional, a mother, father, a son, and a daughter, all four are almost never IP because it's too complicated, too stressful, to manage without some of that earth-based experience to help ground the progress of that family's life. I hope you're enjoying this video because if you are, there are dozens more like it on my site, all supported by people like you. So if you'd like to keep this work rolling in and join our community, just click on the Patreon button at reginameredith.com. That also gives you access to insider commentary, my live book club, and other live events with special guests. So join in. Thanks. Now we're going to move into the other part of this conversation, which you you started learning about along the way, and that is the layers and of hierarchy in terms of kind of councils that oversee development and evolution of all the planets of the of the solar system itself of the universe. So let's talk about what that looks like on Earth, starting with Earth's High Council. Um, different people have talked about this in different ways. I think most of these viewers. Um, watching this, I've heard of like the Ashtar command, but it's become almost a cliche. So let's let's talk about it as you know it. We'll focus this on the coordination of humanity because I think then that might help this make more sense. 
Um, so let me just just briefly define you know my term earth based and earth based soul because it, sometimes this happens a lot with clients um, because the term earth bound soul is used so much in spiritual teaching and spiritual writing and that sort of thing earth bound soul most people use that term to mean um, uh, someone who's died and uh, theoretically that soul hasn't fully crossed over into the higher realm i'm saying earth based not earth bound earth based means again as i said earlier in our conversation if you're an earth based soul you pro you came from somewhere else originally but like myself um i've been coming here for tens of thousands of years that's an earth-based soul so earth-based souls evolve through lifetime to lifetime to lifetime truly ad nauseum on earth moving through you know, utilizing free will and because we have free will when we come into the earth body um we sometimes don't make the best choices therefore we can incur karma so an earth-based soul evolves lifetime to lifetime to lifetime progressing growing evolving um and that would be called dharma which means gaining evolution but we also gather karma which means you know three lifetimes ago i was a a, a parent of two children and i was more uh, focused on my own life and my own needs than my children's needs so i gathered karma so earth-based souls evolve here essentially as earth-based souls um evolve and this can take oh my goodness this can take hundreds if not a thousand or more lifetimes as an earth-based soul evolves gains wisdom it's just like we come to earth to go to school it's like walking into the elementary school when you're in first or second or you know third grade or whatever um we come to earth to grow and evolve once we've reached a level and just to make it a little bit left-brained um if we put soul evolution on a 10-point scale once we're somewhere in the range of maybe a seven um our responsibilities at the soul level expand and so and and i think probably listeners know this when we're in body so i use myself as an example when linda's in body i have a portion a fractal a uh a, a, a piece of my soul like a slice of my soul pie in this body that causes linda to live and breathe the remainder of my soul is my higher self if my higher self is we would say a seven and above then i am um i'm going to say required to have responsibilities at a higher level at at a level again to use fifth dimensional language at fifth dimension and above to coordinate earth as best is possible when we're souls not humans working as a guide to guide humans the what i call the earth council we could call it the earth high council i mean it's not you know i always want to say this it's not a claim to fame to be a seven and to have these responsibilities they are demanding um fairly critical responsibilities but so the earth high council works like a congress like a parliament um i would say in some ways healthier than our u.s congress their united states congress um there's disagreement for sure but there isn't um rudeness or or you know criticizing someone's um own personality sort of a you know putting down people that doesn't happen at the soul level but there is not this pollyanna picture of oh i'm at the soul level and life is glorious and everybody is lovey-dovey it is not no. like that no so that's the earth high council that works to coordinate earth so now on earth there are two other types of souls incarnate interplanetary souls that we've been talking about and there are souls from the angelic realm the angelic realm which we could again have a whole hour conversation about the angelic realm the angelic soul is different than earth-based is different than ip the angelic realm serves the higher force that coordinates 
earth. They're like ambassadors of the higher force. I've been taught to call that the Manu. Um, and the role, and I don't mean to make this sound airy fairy because it's really not that way. They bring love and compassion energy to earth of which we do not have in sufficient quantity. Um, so the angelic realm has their own high council. And then there's an interplanetary high council. Both of these councils other than the earth council so there's three councils in the higher realm these are the councils that that serve the expansion of humanity not the expansion of the universe so i hope that is clear enough yeah yeah it does and i think it's important to point out whether you're an earth-based soul an ip soul an angelic soul um source Anyone who's been incarnating here any length of time is all embroiled in the same stuff. It's just maybe a little more confusing for some than others, but we all get in it. We've all had these experiences. We've all fallen into, you know, poor behavior and bad decision making once you've been here long enough, no matter what you came to do and contribute. So I think it's very important to say in, a, in the end, we are all embodied and in this together. So now we just need to start making some better decision, <laughs> decisions to, together. So let's talk about some of what these, through your regressions and also through what you learn from your own guides, some of what they have been trying to get through to us in modern times uh, that we don't seem to be listening to. Well, you know, it, it, I'll just, I mean, I listen to these guides often and then it, it, it works, you know, back and forth. It's like I, I I have clients during the week and I'm learning things from clients that then my guides talk to me about or vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, what's really uppermost right now, um, so it just feels easy to talk about this, um, a current focus, and this is very current because this is information I've been getting that's fairly new in the last two to three weeks. The, the higher realm, these three councils, two things. Um, one, it, it, you know, I was going to say it seems to be true. I certainly believe these things are, are valid. Um, the three councils, without repeating all their names, the three councils have recently had the first joint meeting that they have ever had. According to what I've received, I'll just put it that way, according, according to what I've received, um, these three councils have not worked basically together. It would almost be like, it's always easy, you probably have listeners that aren't Americans, but the US Congress is called bicameral. So the US Congress, bicameral means they're the Republicans and the Democrats. Um, it would be as if the Republicans and Democrats had never um, attempted to coordinate with each other. So the three councils have never attempted to coordinate with each other. Now, that said, let me just add that the IP council has representatives from Earth and representatives from many other locations in the celestial realm. But of late, there has been, um, a, according to what I've learned, a days long meeting jointly of the three councils. The, the Manu, the group soul that does all they can to guide humanity because they can't come down here and, you know, fiddle with elections or, or, you know, change someone's literal behavior. Right. Um, this joint council is the first time this has happened. And now there are two task forces being formed, um, joint task forces to serve Earth. So coming all the way back around to your question, um, one is focused on what we call Gaia. One is focused on helping save our planet, you know, and that would include plants, animals, minerals, rocks, um, focused on what we're not doing well enough, and that is to take care of of Mother Earth or Pachamama, as as people in the Southern Hemisphere call um, Earth. So one task force is for global warming, 
The other task force, this probably won't surprise people. It's like, I want to, you know, go da 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 da. The other one is focused on democracy. The expansion, and my guides are saying not just the expansion of democracy, but holding fast to the need from what does democracy mean? It means everyone has a voice and everyone matters. And so global warming and democracy are the focus. Okay. Um, Just to that, so I don't forget, anybody watching this that can go back, uh, scroll back through all the faces and look for Gates McKibben in our original interview on democracy. It is an absolutely beautiful conversation. The books of her works on true democracy are beautiful. So it gives us a template of what democracy should be be looking like and what its original intention was, although it's become distorted. So I just wanted to say that as far far as global warming and climate change, um, this is an interesting one to me because here you have you have human involvement. You know, you don't need to have stuff spewing out into the air. That's not good and polluting our waters and so forth. Um, so that that we know those problems, but we also know there is cyclical global warming and cooling of the earth herself it's her own cycles how do we work between what earth is doing and needs to do for herself and our own participation on her surface and how we're affecting things in her emotional body physical body and so forth this to me is a big deal because we've been through mass extinctions before They likely will happen again, but a lot would be lost and a lot is lost in terms of the souls on earth and the knowledge gained every time there's a mass extinction. No, I don't think anyone wants to see that happen. So talk to me about how these are working together, Gaia herself working together with these councils and how we fit in. Well, first of all, of course, there are scientists on earth that understand what you just described. Um, And what honestly, what I'm hearing Regina in my head is that the beauty of this coming together of these councils in the higher realm is that IPs, certain IP souls have a we might even say a more specific, more lengthy understanding of how planets are of course created and have to cool in order for life to exist. But IPs have a a knowledge base of, of what you're describing to expand and complement what earth scientists um, are experiencing. And of course, then, then what comes to my mind too, is uh, this fascinating web, you know, the new web telescope, the W E B B telescope that is bringing back information that we've never had before. And so with the focus with one of these joint task forces is forces focusing on um, global warming, climate change, then we have uh, better collaboration on on how to help earth and what's a natural cycle and what's a human caused problematic cycle exactly that yes that's well put because when i think about it in the hermetic context for example um the planets um the spheres themselves are their own massive entities these are very um influential entities in and of themselves throughout the cosmos, our planet being one of them. And so I'm wondering about what it's like when on a level of galaxies or solar system wide, when the entities that are our planets come together and discuss this and look at it as well, when one needs a shake up Mars, they're starting to realize has been through theirs. Mars used to be populated, it appears, and some souls come through saying, I used to live on Mars and when it was not as it is now. Now, others have been there during phases where they've only been living underground. There have been people on Earth living underground in various epochs. So we need to understand this is a much broader subject than just carbon credits. 
And we need to look at all of it. We need to look at it from how we stop being abusive to earth on the surface, but also to come into acceptance that larger cycles exist and we have chosen to incarnate. This is the big one. A lot of people say, I don't know what I'm doing here. I mean, I didn't choose this. I would argue differently. You can't stuff a soul in a body. Having guided regression now for maybe 28 years, I have absolutely no doubt that we choose to incarnate. We choose to come into body. Now, are we strongly encouraged? And do we know the need of why we need to come to earth to aid humanity? Yes, of course. Um, But no one is forced to incarnate. No, you can't do it. (laughs) That's the free will option of being on earth. So here we are all together at a time when I'm surrounded by raging fires. We just had two weeks with temperatures, literally. I'm in California in the foothills of the Sierra up to 117 degrees. Now this is becoming more the norm in Britain. People have been baking this summer and don't have air conditioning. So now we have to look at, okay, I mean, This is kind of simple stuff, but it's important. Do we have the adequate technology? We can run air conditioning all over the planet as it warms without having caused causing further damage to the atmosphere. All these simple little things, all of it has to be taken into consideration. But back to our original topic, that's where all this genius comes in because these technologies already exist. Even someone like Elon Musk bringing electric cars to the fore and getting rid of fossil fuel-based automobiles and trucks, that's a huge step right there, you know, when it comes to environment globally. But there are others like him, many, many like him are incarnating now that have the solutions that we can do this. I mean, are you finding that in your regressions with people? That is the point of when I guide regressions and my clients, I mean, of course, all my clients are not interplanetary souls, but when an interplanetary soul discovers, when a client comes and has a regression and discovers there's an, they are an interplanetary soul and why they're here, then hopefully, and I do know this happens with many clients, they stop thinking there's something wrong with them. They stop um, putting up with people misunderstanding or teasing them or putting them down. Um, I mean, I I was just recently chatting with uh, a second cousin of mine um, who's a person that has a PhD um, in, in robotics, which is a very unique PhD, and is working with car manufacturers to um, hasten changes in cars that will aid emissions and things that, I mean, so these are, I would guess, I don't know, I've never regressed this person, but I would re- I would imagine this is an example of an IP soul. I know a lot about allergies and eating, you know, n- nutritional issues and that sort of thing for this person. Um, so it's, understanding there's nothing wrong with an IP soul who has this issue or that issue. Why are they here? How can they um, cope better? How can they eat the diet that works for them and kind of gently push people aside who say, you only eat this or you only eat that? It's all that acceptance. And then um, as humans that we utilize the wisdom of course, of not just IP souls, but earth-based souls, IP souls, and angelic realm souls, which would be a whole nother beautiful and wondrous conversation because angelic souls are different again. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, I think it's a lot of the points you've already gotten forward are really important because if we can understand that we have someone different amidst us and they have different requirements for just being here physically and they've agreed to be here as we all have, then I think that person can relax and start letting their own dharma and purpose reveal itself to them much easier without all this noise and resistance around them and let people get to work. And I used Elon a moment ago, people say, goodness, he's got nine kids, all these different women, his life's a, you know, kind of a circus, but 
you got to say the man has brought some technology to the planet, but he's considered, and he says he has Asperger's. He's he's what would be considered autistic in our world. So he might not be most the most socially uh, adept person. But and we're going to be seeing much more of this. But the gift is what they bring by way of knowledge, be it uh, spiritual technology or physical technology. And when you think of beings that have been communicating telepathically becoming earth beings this is a deal and so, so people like susie miller whom i've interviewed and going i'm going to again has been communicating telepathically with these autistic kids and many of whom aren't from here so this is something we need to get our minds around and begin really working with and trying to open up and have translators even become more sensitive so we can telepathically communicate with our own kids that are coming in this is all part of our future as i see it thoughts oh my goodness it, you know i this always comes to my mind when i'm having a conversation like this um, there was a, a man maybe two, three years ago that won America's Got Talent. Um, his name is Cody Lee, and he's um, he, he's visually impaired. Um, you know, he's on the spectrum, et cetera, et cetera. He has a beautiful mother who is, I think, the reason he's uh, functioning as well as he is. But he writes music and plays the piano, and the messages in his music are just, well, certainly, I'm going to say beyond this, you know, out of this world, beyond this this uh, earth world. Um, I, I've never regressed him. I don't know him personally. I can't help but strongly believe he's an IP soul. And only with a mother, or, or could be a father, or it could be a grandparent, it could be anybody, but only with someone who accepts him, supports him, and then he reached this point of becoming a national figure, bringing his messages forward. That's what comes to my mind, Regina, when you say what you just said. It's actually very beautiful. It's just going to be a confusing time for many. And we need to open up capabilities within ourselves that have been dormant, uh, whether we be earth-based, IP, angelic, we're in bodies. We need to open those capacities. And Linda, I look forward to more uh, conversations with you and meeting with you personally, which I'm going to be doing, and um, just getting to know you as a friend more because there's so much more to discover, talk about, and share with everybody else. So I want to thank you for taking the time out of your very busy schedule of regressions to do this with us today. My great pleasure. Thank you for this opportunity. All right, everybody, I found this an absolutely fascinating conversation, and uh, Linda is a real gem for us. So if you want to learn more about her work or connect with her, you can go to ravenheartcenter.com. And the book we were referring to is Souls on Earth, which you can find through Amazon. Until next time, thank you for joining us here on reginameredith.com. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you might also want to consider joining Patreon, which allows me to keep all of this content free and available to everyone. And if you're looking for like-minded souls, you might also enjoy my online community called Our Neighborhood. Links to join are in the description.